One of the worst problems, at least for me, with Fire Red and Leaf Green, was the fact that a lot of the trainers and gym leaders would constantly spam their evasion attacks until they were maxed out, making it sometimes take forever to even land a successful attack on them. They changed the look of Red's character from this to this. No offense to the new design, but what was wrong with the old look? You couldn't trade with Generation 2 like in Pokemon Red and Blue. There was no day and night cycle, even though Gold and Silver had them. Lavender Town was way less creepy than the original. I mean, it looks like somebody's been smoking a ton of weed in the Pokemon Tower. Maybe that's why these trainers look so stoned. Smoke weed every day. Diglett's Cave was a pain to go through because of Diglett and Dugtrio's new ability, Arena Trap, which makes it so you can't simply run away from them. You have to battle every single one. For some for some reason Nintendo decided to switch the Pokemon and item buttons on the menu during a battle. This always messed me up after having the muscle memory from playing Pokemon Blue. If you played a pirated copy of Fire Red or Leaf Green, there was actually a hidden message from Nintendo. An NPC would tell you, if you like this game, buy it or die. The entire game was made to be more kid friendly. Lots of things got censored, including sprites and text. This was kind of unnecessary in my opinion as I played the originals as a kid, and it didn't affect me as a person. There's a glitch in Fire Red and Leaf Green where if you keep losing to the rocket grind on Nugget Bridge, you can get infinite nuggets. Double battles were introduced in Ruby and Sapphire, so they were also in these games as well. However, there weren't very many of them, and it would have been awesome to have a double battle against Jesse and James. I mean, they were in Pokemon Yellow, so why not have them here? Speaking of missed opportunities, one of the coolest scrapped battles in Pokemon Red and Blue was the Professor Oak battle. It would have been awesome if they would actually have had this in the remakes. But sadly, that didn't happen. Catching them all was a whole lot harder to do in the remakes. For some reason, they decided it would be a good idea to include a pedophile Pokemon side quest. They didn't include the feature for Pokemon to follow you, even though they had it in Pokemon Yellow. There was an anti-cheating feature where hacking a Mew or Deoxys would cause them not to listen, ignoring every order you give them. And yet, if you get them through glitching, they still obey just fine. And of course, the worst problem with these remakes is having to worry about owning a real copy of them. As Fire Red and Leaf Green were very easy to fake and hard to notice if you didn't know how. Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver are probably my favorite Pokemon games in the entire franchise, but they still have their share of problems as well, though most of them are just minor issues and nitpicks. The new male trainer design was just awful compared to the old one. The new Safari Zone had a block feature that would only upgrade after 10 days of usage. So we had to wait that long before we could even get our first upgrade. The Pal part made a return in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, meaning that if you wanted to transfer your Pokemon, you would have to go into the park and recapture all six of your Pokemon every single time you wanted to transfer. There's also a vanishing glitch on the GTS. The summary button sometimes got replaced with the deposit button, suggesting the Pokemon had already been traded, even though it hadn't. If a cadaver is traded while holding an Everstone, it'll still evolve into Alakazam. The problem with people constantly calling you was still annoying. They removed both the Goldenrod City and the Celadon City game corners to censor gambling. Unlike how Fire Red and Leaf Green's intro was an updated version of the opening from Red and Green, Heart Gold and Silver have an entirely new intro, using none of the footage from the intro of Gold and Silver. Why did they make this change? It would have been awesome to see the original intro updated. The new touchscreen minigames in the Wi-Fi Plaza were pretty uninteresting to me. Chikorita was still in unfortunately the worst starter to pick. There was still a big level gap between Victory Road and the Elite Four due to a lack of trainers for more experience. One of the only ways to get evolutionary stones is winning first place in the bug catching contest which was only held on certain days of the week, and the first place prize was a random evolution stone, so you only had a 1 in 9 chance of even getting the stone you wanted, making evolution stones pretty rare and hard to find. For some reason, Wooper can learn Ice Punch, but he has no arms! What the heck is he punching me with, his pingus? Whenever people do call you on your phone, they never really have anything interesting to say. How on earth is this even possible? And of course, the worst problem was that Entei and Raikou were still a pain to catch. You just thought that they would have fixed this by now, but nope, it was still just as annoying and time consuming as ever. Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire had just recently been released, and yet they still have had some problems of their own as well. One of the biggest problems to me was the fact that we couldn't customize our trainers. With Pokemon X and 
why we had very limited character customization, so I figured it would be improved in the next game, but no. Instead we got no character customization at all. I get that they still want to stay true to the original designs and all, but it wouldn't have hurt to let us at least change our clothes. The technology is already there, so there was really no excuse. As I've stated before, a lot of the new Mega Evolution designs were really bad. Especially Mega Slowbro. Why not have him look like this instead? Now that would be awesome. Secret bases are way too expensive to furnish. The Pikachu cosplay feature is one of the most ridiculous things I've seen in a while. I mean, what's next? DLC for Pikachu to cosplay as Miley Cyrus? Not only was the Pikachu cosplay ridiculous, but it also broke Pokemon contests as well. There was a game-breaking glitch around the time Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire first came out, where at the end of the game, at the Hall of Fame, it would freeze when starting the ending cutscene. Why didn't the actual games look like this? There was still a lot of surfing, which can get quite boring after a while, but at least they tried to make it a little more interesting. There was no Battle Frontier at all, instead we got the Battle Resort. The game still lags terribly if 3D is engaged. Game Freak actually censored using curse words as your trainer name, so no more having names like this. Marshtop's 3D model looks really constipated. There's 7HM moves in the game to learn this time around, all of which you'll need to navigate everywhere on the map. Add in secret powers that are used to build the secret base, and you end up using your Pokemon more as a source of transportation rather than a battle companion. 3D is still limited just as in X and Y. So, no 3D in the overworld once again. And the worst problem of all, in my opinion, was that these games were just way too easy compared to the originals. The original games were pretty challenging in many different ways, and the remakes go out of their way to make everything as easy as possible, in addition to the experience share continuing to be broken, not to mention that 90% of the trainers have less than 3 Pokemon on their teams. Other than all of that though, these remakes were great. They had beautiful graphics and improved on many of the original's faults. I enjoyed playing through them and hope to see more remakes in the future of either Kanto again, or Diamond and Pearl next. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. This has been Brandon, and I'll see you guys in the next video.